Hello guys, welcome to my shop. Um, today I had it planned to head out to the track and do the review on the Apex head that a, a, a subscriber sent me, but unfortunately the weather is not uh, cooperating today. Halfway to the track, hit some rain, and uh, checked Facebook and they said they closed the track for the day, so it wouldn't have been a good day for testing anyway if it was raining out there, but guess I'll try again maybe later in the week might go out midweek or next weekend but I definitely want to get this in but this video is just going to be kind of a, um, a update of some videos that I have coming up here shortly um, one is with the apex head we're gonna talk about that a little bit in a second here also a conversion it's, it's the um, this is a KTM 250 F SX it's a 2019 250 SX and we're going to be doing the uh, the BRC BRC conversion to the 500 CC it comes this kit comes with everything it's cases cylinder power valves um, the pipe he's choosing this well we're gonna get to that in a second so let's go ahead and discuss apex apex head oh also at the end of the video I'm gonna show you my nitrogen setup or how I set up uh, how I fill the shocks up with nitrogen the subscriber asked about that it's a little cheap setup I have going on but it gets the job done I'll show you that at the end of the video. Jump right into the heads here. Um, have, I have two heads here to, to compare the Apex head to just on a visual comparison. Um, this is just a stock 2011 to uh, 2021 YZ250 head, the American model. They first started using this head in Europe in 2003. Uh, Europe never got the high compression head that we received in America starting in 2003 to 2010 which is the 5 UP they never received that they 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 got this the 5 W uh, the 5 MW that's one they got in 2003 and they stayed with that all the way till current and then in America in 2011 they switched this over from the higher compression head of the 5 UP to uh, the low compression head of the 5 MW starting in 2011 so we're gonna kinda compare these and uh, with the apex head so let's jump right into the apex head here All right, the subscriber sent us two domes. We have, let's see if I can pop her out here. All right. We have the MX dome. The MX dome, uh, it looks pretty, looks nice. It's nice and shiny and clean. Um, it looks like just by a guess and experience, it's gonna be about 50 thousandths of the squish band clearance. And that's just by feeling it here, what I feel the lip here. Um, the guy that sent me the head, he did mention that it was uh, on his bike it came out to 52 thousandths now I don't know what uh, cylinder base gaskets he, he's using I always use the OEM gaskets because as if you change your cylinder base gasket some of your aftermarket brands can be a little bit thinner or thicker and that can that will change your squish band clearance and your compression ratio ever so slightly but it definitely does so he was getting 52 I'm gonna check it on my bike when I go to do, put the head on and see what I get out of it and, or out of both these actually this this one right here is the XC dome this is like your off-roads enduro um, trail riding hair scramble type dome so I'll also be CC in the heads checking the uh, cubic centimeters of the head if you watch my video on the head mod you'll see how I just take the whole head and put it uh, bolted down to some plexiglass fill this up with water with a syringe and measure how much water I can get in this whole area and that lets me know the overall volume and uh, I use that to see where I'm at, comp you know, as far as the compression ratio is concerned. Did did I go higher in a compression ratio when I swapped to this head over here, or did I go lower than what I'm currently running, or what the uh, 2011 to 2021 head is, or even the 2006 head for that matter? But um, yeah. So uh, Kelly sent me this apex head with two domes. Um, just by quick observation on this dome, comparing it to the uh, 5MW dome, it definitely has a tighter squish band. It's going to have a tighter... This this one, it's pretty sick. It, this one comes out like, I can't remember, it was like 80-something thousands. It's, it's, just, it's just nuts how, 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 uh, how wide they have the squish band clearance on this head. It's... it's 
I, I don't understand it. But um, this one definitely seems to be about 50 thousandths, and we're going to find out when we go to put it on the bike. And it appears to be kind of a lower compression head. Um, there's there's a several things to pay attention to when it, when I'm just looking at it to figure out that you know if it's going to be a high or low compression head. It's not only the squish band clearance because that that does take up that does uh, uh, affect the compression ratio, you know, and then it, the whole area does from here in the dome, the, you know, as the piston comes up, the space that's in there. So I'm looking at that in the dome, and if I compare that to a head that I already did, this head right here, um, it basically uses the stock compression ratio this it's the same volume in here as the 2003 to 2010 5 up head as you can see it started originally started out as that head and then it's been rechambered i milled it to get the squish band down to about 40 thousandths and then i opened up the dome here to uh, relieve the compression to get it right back to the same compression ratio that the head originally was in 2003 to 2010 so comparing this to this you can it's hard might be hard to see on the on the screen but this dome is definitely bigger than this dome and uh it looks like the squish band width is also more narrow in this one i'll, I'll break this out some calipers here in a second and we'll measure that and uh, so i'm going to guess that this is actually a lower compression ratio than the 5 up head came stock however it will have a tighter squish band clearance than the 5 up came stock because the 5 up stock came at about 67 thousandths and this is going to be about 50 thousandths is what i'm gathering here all right let's i had this one set about probably about 11 thousandths i mean 11 millimeters i'm, I'm start I, I i'm reaching right to where it just starts to curve in maybe 11.20 this one measures out to just a little bit less about 1075 so a little bit less of a width on the spit on the squish band um, that that too will indicate to me that this is kind of favoring a little more top end power because the squish band is a little bit more narrow and with the lower compression ratio it appears the lower compression ratio i haven't cc'd it yet but i will be it appears that this is going to be more of a of, of a more favoring your top end not solely a top end but more kind of favoring that where i have this head set up to kind of favor the middle of the power band you know it's not really a top end head and it's not a mid range or bottom but somewhere in the in the mid upper mid range is where i have this set up at so my, my goal when I set up these heads is not to affect the bottom end at all. If anything, gain bottom end. Gain everything all the way across the board, actually. I don't know if this head's going to do that, but we're going to test ride it and find out. And I will, that's what I will be including in the video once I get this thing out to the track. Uh, I will be doing back-to-back -back comparisons. So I'll be pulling the head off right at the track and bolting on the other head. And, you know, just a good back-to-back -back comparison. And then we have the XC dome here. All right, so this definitely looks, even compared to this one, um, it looks like it might be about a similar compression ratio to this one. Again, I will be CCing them to find out for certain, but just just on looks, um, it, the main difference I see here is the squish band is more even more narrow, and it's rounded out. You know, that's that's going to be interesting. I'm I'm real interested to try this out and just see how it how it affects the bike you know after giving this another look it actually might be higher compression yeah it might actually be slightly higher but we won't know until we cc it and uh, i'll make that all in one video with the test rides and everything like that that i should have out in about a good week and um, i'll be doing some gopro footage on it and stuff i now do have the capability to edit videos and and put them all together so i'll be doing that for this one so just my observation an opinion without even test riding it yet so let's see, we're gonna find out if I'm right when it's all said and done but I'm going to guess that this head is a good improvement over the stock 2011 to 2021 American model or 20 uh, 2003 to to uh, 2021 European model I'm going to I'm guessing as of right now it surely is an improvement because the squish bands clearance is gonna be much better um, however I 
don't know if it's going to be better than the 06 to 2021 5 up head out the box even, even though the squish band will be better at 50, at 50 thousandths versus what the 06 head comes at at about um 67 thousandths but it appears this is going to be lower compression so it's like you're you're going to have a lower compression but tighter squish that kind of indicates to me that they were trying to get this to run on pump feel and to run you know pretty decent on pump feel um as you get your squish band about 50 thousandths that seems to be the range the squish band clearance on a 252 stroke that seems to be the range that re, uh, resists pinging the best and then at that point you use a compression ratio to fine tune to tune in or out you know if, if you raise the compression you're obviously going to have to run race fuel but if you drop it you can get it low enough where you can get away a pump gas so i'm thinking that that's what they did here they're trying to give you better performance but at, at the same time not raise raise your fuel requirements but i'll find out when i test ride it pretty cool Especially because you can just buy it and bolt it on. You don't have to do all the work that I did modifying the head. I mean, there's nothing wrong with sending it out to someone and having them do it for you. Uh, that always works. The beauty of uh, the beauty of having someone do the head or you doing it yourself is it's custom to your bike. Um, you know, when, when the head gas or when the cylinder base gasket is changed, it can change the thickness. I always I always suggest using sticking with one brand cylinder base gasket so every time you do a top end things don't change i choose to stick with the oems because i know i can always get an oem gasket and i know they're not going to change their thickness or anything i don't expect them to where some of the other brands you never know you buy a head gasket or a cylinder base gasket from one year and then two years later you buy the same you know brand cylinder base gasket now it looks different like they they've outsourced it to someone else to make it and it's a little bit thicker a little bit thinner so i stick with the oem on that and I, I get it too with them sending them out at 50 thousandths. Um, if I had to put this in stages, uh, 50 thousandths is like stage one. You know, if you're like putting camshafts in a car or whatever, it's a stage one. Um, 40 thousandths, where this one's at, that's a, like a stage two. And then uh, 30 thousandths, that's the full race level spec. If you set the squish band clearance to 30 thousandths, that's, that's, um, that's a stage three. They're they're kind of sending these out at a stage one, and I understand why because they don't they don't they're sending this out blindly. They don't know what cylinder base gasket you're going to be using, plus the wear of your motor as your lower rod bearing starts to wear, and your upper wrist pin bearing, for that matter, or even crank bearings as they start you know developing maybe a little bit of play or whatever. They don't know the condition of your motor, and as things wear out in your motor. When your when your motor goes to swing that piston up, goes to push it up, especially when you let go of the throttle, the little bit of up and down play that you ha that you might have, even if you can't feel it by hand, it might be there if your motor's really worn out. Once it's really swinging that thing around, it can actually cause the piston to go up a little bit higher than normal when it slings it up and it's time to pull it back down. It can actually throw it up, and so they have to take that in consideration when they send these out. They don't really know the condition of your motor, so fifty thousandths is definitely a good safe. Um, squish band to send them out and that's why most your tuners will send stuff out at about 50 thousandths unless you request tighter like 40 or 30 thousandths um, so again I don't know yet if this is 50 thousandths he said it measured 52 thousandths and but just based on the feel and experience I've, I've cut out a lot of heads in my life and that feels like 50 thousandths to me where I'm gonna find out when I get on the bike and I have some uh, brand new uh, o-ring head seals the o-rings for the head gasket so when i go to do that review so there they are guys and and uh yeah i hope to get that out within a week or so now let's get on to this ktm uh, build here so yeah we have a conversion kit for this 250sx to turn into a 500cc with a power valve i don't know what's in each one of these boxes so we're just going to run through them together and see what we have and if i can get it open here we go let's see what this is oh this looks like it's gonna be the piston all right so look at the size of the wrist pin bearing on that thing we got the piston rings right here it looks like a two ring piston this is wow that's a big piston 500 cc's for you uh, looks like a cast piston. I would I'd probably rather see a forged piston, but you know, hey, it's fine. It's what came with the kit and it's what he'll be running. All right, let's see. Let me put this back in and we'll see what else we have. 
Oh, got a new air filter. I have no clue what this is, but it's taped up. So let's see. I'm surprised he didn't open all this stuff before he brought it to me. Ah, it's a cylinder head. And it's huge. Wow. That's a big cylinder head. I like it. Looks good. Nice, nice good cut right here. Squish band clearance um, for 500 cc. That's going to I'm going to guess that's gonna be about 60, 70,000. It's gonna eh, maybe a little bit on the fatter side, but not overkill for a 500. The bigger the motor, the more uh squish band clearance you need because now you're chugging a bigger piston up there remember what i was mentioning about the play that you can get in the bearings and stuff like that with wear and time they consider that plus they consider just the rod bearing and the metal is actually getting sw swung up so fast at the top end that there can be a little bit of stretch so they have to consider that that's why you can get away with the tighter squish band clearance on like an 85 but as you get bigger you know larger size motors need a fatter clearance but anyway this is supposed to have a decompression, so it allows you to start it. That's what that little hole is there and here for. Um, not sure, quite sure what that's for right here. Maybe for the water jacket? I don't know. But, okay, that's the cylinder head. All right, I don't know what this stuff is. Let's see. Oh, it looks like power valve stuff. It's going to be interesting, a power valve on a 500cc. I know the KX500 has a power valve, but the CR500 didn't. Um, this is going to have a power valve. All right, let's get this thing open and see what it looks like. Pretty nifty. Looks like it's going to be a vacuum controlled power valve. That's what it appears so far. Oh, they already put that underneath there for me. Huh. They're just trying to make it easier for you, I guess. Nice. Looks really pretty. And then you have this right here. They even took the time to write top. So that's pretty cool. And top, yeah. And then, of course, we have this O-ring gasket for it. So, all right. Um, I, I believe we have everything but the cylinder right now. He mentioned that the cylinder is still in the process of being shipped to him. So, we're probably not going to be able to inspect, inspect the cylinder yet. And I'll be waiting for that to arrive before we do the actual job. But let's see what else we have. All right. We have a spark plug BR-8 EIX. What's in here? They uh, they definitely package all this stuff up really well. Oh, we have a lot of little parts in here. We have some washers, brass washers, uh, some more of your locating pens and stuff. Kickstart idler gear. They write everything on it. That's awesome. Swing arm, bushings. Oh, you're gonna need some different bushings fit that big motor in there. Cause they even, this kit even comes with the cases. It's crazy. Your head bolts. Um, rear spacer. Hmm. Well, guess I'll figure that out when we get there. And then it looks like this cylinder studs. All right. All right. What do we have in here? Shift drum bushing, transmission vent, and a decompression valve. Kickstarter seal, shift shaft seal, and the head o rings, and also the crank o ring. All right. Not quite sure what this is. Four threes. Just some nice little stickers. Hmm. Let me turn the light on and see a little better in here. Yeah, they're pretty. Oh, I like how they recess the reed pedals. I don't know if you can see that in there. They're, they're, yeah, pretty nice. And they put a nice rubber coating on these now. These are the V Force 4R. Nice. Well, this one's heavy. Ugh. It says crank and bearing kit. Let me open this up, see what we got. Alright. Well, we have a lot of stuff in here. Alright, we have a hose.
Hmm, what's in here? Let me open it up. Looks like we have the uh, the motor mounts that go to the cylinder heads. What it appears. Let's see what this says. Yep, head stay bolt. So that's what this is. Cool. And then we have, uh, looks like some crank bearings and seals. Oh, we have something big here. Oh, look, this looks like it's the exhaust gas. I mean, the, the header flange. Let's see. Yep, that's what it is. She's beautiful. And the bolts that hold it on. All right. This is all your transmission bearing kits. So transmission bearing kit, Husqvarna KTM. So this is going to be going in the cases. This. Gotta be careful. Don't want to scratch anything. Just anything in there. Because he paid a lot of money for this stuff, I'm sure. But it's going to be a sweet build when it's all said and done. Alright, let me get this open. Oh, look at that counterbalancer. It's probably a good thing for a 500. Because these things can vibrate. Yeah, it's a counterbalancer. Sweet. And then it comes with um, the key right here. A seal. The bearing. Another bearing. Let's make sure I'm not losing anything here. Last thing I want to do is lose anything. All right. Now this has to be the crankshaft. This. Thing. Oh, they got newspaper in there. Ain't that nice? All right. Let me get this open. This looks like a brand spanking new crankshaft. She is pretty. Whoa. All right, comes with the gear already on it. Looks like they use standard left, uh, right handed threading there. No lock washer, but maybe they'll have it somewhere else. But we'll definitely be using Loctite. And it came with all the instructions. Uh, made in Japan rod. That's really nice. Oh, Pro X rod. Sweet. This is a pretty crank. They use some really nice fine threading for the stator here. And uh, a nice rod bearing in there. Thrush washers. So yeah, she's looking good. Let me go ahead and put that away in a safe place. Alright, this says engine cases. Let me go ahead and pull these out. Alright, got them out of the box. Now let me go ahead and get them out of this bubble wrap. Alright, nice pretty set of cases here. So some bearings here. What is this for exactly? Output shaft. Ah, yeah, probably for the counter shaft there. Obviously, it has a spot for hydraulic clutch. Now let's go ahead and pull this cover off. See what it looks like. Oh, they have one more over here. Yeah, just nice aluminum cover, and uh, this is going to be the not electric start model. He chose to opt out of the electric start and keep it old school, kicking it. I forgot the exact poundage, but I think he said something like it claims claims it gains like six or eight pounds to go to the electric start. He chose to keep it a little bit lighter weight. Hmm. They did a little grinding away right here. I'm guessing. They did, I mean, they did a good job. It looks good. But I'm guessing that um, the pipe probably comes really close to that spot. That, that's just what I'm guessing. I won't know until I really start putting it together. Oh, lo and behold, on the other side, they have another little present for us here. All right, it says water pump kit. All right, that's going to be the kit to put this water pump together. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, nice. They even... Scratching a little arrow pointing to where to check the oil there. I guess they had it casted like this and later on they're like, you know what? We need people are pulling that one out. We need to put a little arrow here. So it's pretty cool. Um they're definitely uh looks like they're they're covering their tracks and they're trying to not leave any stones on turn, so that's pretty cool. Alright.
it's a little bit of a rough finish here. Um, they, I mean, they might have did that by design. I know typically when you port and polish them, you like to smoothen that out, but it's probably, this is such a big motor, it probably doesn't even make a difference, honestly. This thing's just going to ooze power. Here we have this box. I believe this is Ignition CDI. All right. Try to peel it out of here real quick. All right, we can... Oh, she's pretty. And it has, looks like it has two uh, settings to choose from. So it's probably going to have a flip switch on it. Yes, it does right here. Well, this is really cool. And um, let's see, use resistor or spark plug and resistor spark plug cap. Uh, let's see, I, I saw something in the box a minute. Ah, oh, there it goes when it was programmed. So that's pretty cool. Got a CDI for. And no kit is not complete without a gasket set. I'm not even going to open that up. I'm sure you've seen, everyone's seen gaskets before. Looks like a FMF silencer. Let's open her up. Oh, there she is. A nice FMF silencer. Doesn't look like a shorty, but uh, doesn't look too long either. Let's see if it mentions anything. No, it's just made in the USA. Oh, there it is. It's the uh, PowerCore 2 S2. Now, this bad boy is going to take up the whole bench. That's a big pipe. If you've ever seen a 500 pipe before, you know they are huge. This thing looks like an anaconda or something. Look at this. It has like double spring mounts. Like they expect you to double spring mount this thing. Big old 500 just pushing pipes off. This thing is just beautiful. And he told me he paid extra to have like it clear coated so it doesn't rust as quick and you don't have to like rush home and put WD 40 on it after every ride. Okay, yeah, it's just, uh, I thought that was a little dent there, but it looks like that that came on the pipe the way, probably when they were crimping these together, but she is pretty. I love the, uh, the head flange here, and let's see how it looks in there, see how they cut it. Oh yeah, it's nice and smooth, there's no lips or anything. There's the brand, if you're in, I don't even know how to say that, but it looks like it's made in Canada. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. And they made this probably just for this build. They even have like the date there and 921. So really cool. I think it's gonna perform nicely. Hmm. All right, let me go ahead and carefully box all this stuff back up. And like I mentioned, it does come with all your specs, your torque specs, and everything like that. Um, the company's BRC Engineering if you're interested in a kit like this and uh, so yeah it's, it looks pretty like it's gonna be a pretty interesting uh, setup it comes with everything as, as as I mentioned earlier in the video I don't have the cylinder head yet but once that arrives um, I'll start the project it uh, it comes with everything from what I gather except the transmission and the clutch you use the OEM your, your current transmission and clutch to do this conversion and maybe some other stuff it looks like like we might be using the power valve governor and just some of the yeah so we'll follow these instructions very closely as we go through this project I uh, definitely want to make sure it comes out good so stay tuned for that I'm going to be knocking this out in probably about a good week as soon as that cylinder comes see the small block of aluminum right there you can lock the gears in. Awesome. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. And now for the nitrogen tank for your home gamer, gamers that want to uh, service your shocks at home and fill them up at nitrogen at home. At first, when I first started servicing my own shocks, I used to run off to the, uh, the local dealership, Cahill Yamaha in Tampa, and they would only charge me, I think it was like 12 bucks to fill it with nitrogen. Then... After a few times doing that, it went up to 25. Then the last time I did, I, I ran up there to get it filled up with nitrogen. Um, they charged me 75, and I was already getting a little iffy about it because they take your shock and they run out into the back shop. You don't get to go there with them, and they come back out about 15 minutes later and hand you your shock and tell you it's full of nitrogen. Yeah, it probably is full of nitrogen, but it could be air. Who knows? I mean, I'm not saying that they would do that. What, what I'm basically saying is, unless I do it myself. 
um, I sometimes question, you know, things like that because, like, I, I would write on the shock, 150 PSI, and did they really get it exactly at 150 P? Only you know if you do it yourself, and I'm kind of really nitpicky about that, so it was nice to go ahead and just fork up the money and get a, get a nitrogen tank. Um, these are for, like, welding and stuff. Sometimes you can get these things for free. Sometimes people just give them away. And that's how I got this one. And then I had to go ahead and get some valves. I picked up these these valves on eBay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if you can see the. I don't know, something racing, but it's it's basically for for like your air shocks on race cars and, or um, nitrogen shocks on race cars and stuff. And uh, they sell these valves. I got it on eBay for I think I paid about 140 bucks for it because you need that. To be able to bring the because there's 4,000 psi in this tank when it's full, so you have to have this valve to bring it down to a level that you can work with. Which um, I usually set them at about 175 or 200, and then from there, the right way to do it, but not the only way, but the way at least is they is people buy a piece that comes on the end right here that when you connect to the shock, you can actually you connect it to the shock, and then you can use a uh, uh what do you call it a knob to go ahead and adjust the pressure exactly where you want it and take it off the shock well that costed if i remember correctly another oh god i can't remember that. definitely over 150 dollars if i remember correctly and i was trying to keep this cheap i just wanted to get right back to filling up my shocks and going so what i did is i this this kit right here that i needed anyway um it came with this little just regular air valve on it so what I did is I just, I already had one of these in the shop. These are what you use for your, uh, your air forks and stuff on, on air fork bikes. And I was like, well, why, why buy that extra valve when I can just put, like, let's say if I'm only going to be putting 150 PSI in a shock, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and just set this valve right here for about 175 PSI. I'll fill up the shock to 175 PSI with that and then I just walk over here connect this up to the shock it'll read the 175 and I should go it's you know this is digital Let's see if I can get it to light up here oh, oh the battery might went dead there. let me go ahead and fix this real quick oh right, there it is you needed a new battery but yeah you just plug this into the shock it's what you use for your air shocks on your air shock bikes you twist it in and you hit this button it'll read 175 if that's what you put in it and go ch -ch -ch, till you bring it down to the 150 you're looking for and then you can unscrew this off without losing anything it'll stay at 150 so these cost like you get these for like 40 or 50 bucks versus 150 or 200 dollar valve that does that if you're a home gamer you want to save a few dollars you can go this route and you'll receive the you'll you'll get the exact same results so yeah of course, the nitrogen tank, I don't know if I mentioned this, I probably did, but just in case, you can get that filled up at any welding supply place that does your gases and stuff. And just, um, they usually just swap out tanks. Um, if you don't have a tank, you can go there and pay a little bit of extra and purchase one of their used tanks. To, it's just like propane tanks, you know? It's pretty much the same thing. As far as the whole exchange system, you know, your gas propane tanks, you just exchange it out. That being said, I filled this one up first time, and you know, they put it to 4,000 pounds. Uh, I don't know where she's at today. I have filled up, uh, she, geez, uh, quite a few shocks with her. And, oh, I'll be, damn, she's getting a little bit lower. She's at 1,500. But I've filled up a lot of shocks with this thing so far. So they just kind of keep going and going and going for quite a while. And when this one gets down to probably about 500 pounds, I'll take it in and swap it out for another tank. I think it costs like 40 bucks. I can't remember, but yeah. Oh, wait, I definitely have to add this real quick. Now, we just discussed nitrogen in the shock. Don't go check the nitrogen in your shock if you don't have a way to fill it back up with nitrogen. Don't stick a, a, a tire pressure gauge on it and see where you're at because just they only hold a very, very, very small amount in a very small compact space. And it's, you know, it's filled with 150 p of tire pressure gauge. That little that little that you hear just you're pushing the tire pressure gauge you're going to lose 30 psi right there so if you're at 150 you're now going to be at 130 so don't check them unless you have the capabilities to fill them back up and if you don't have the capability of filling it back up and you want to check it then just take it to someone that does have the capabilities of filling it back up have them check it and fill it back up but anyway 
Uh, I guess that's it guys. Um, we have uh, these two videos coming up here shortly. The Apex Head and then this uh, KTM 250SX conversion to a uh, 500cc BRC motor. So stay tuned. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please click subscribe and like and the bell icon. And uh, yeah, this is I'll be knocking these out. I should have both of these available in about two weeks. See you guys.